What's better than receiving chocolates for Valentine's Day? Creating chocolates for the ones you love. Today, we will be making pixelated heart chocolates. It's very simple to do. You don't need a lot. It doesn't cost very much, but it really shows you've gone that extra mile. Now, there are unlimited ways of doing this, and today we'll just be describing the double boiler method. Quite simply, all you need is some chocolate. You can get these at any craft store or whatnot. Uh, they're wafers. You, you could uh, technically even use um, Hershey Kisses. They just don't melt quite right. Um, I have nice little silicon boiling pots that I got from Hoobie Luby um, for like three bucks with a coupon. Uh, but that's not necessary at all. You, know, you can just use a dish in a microwave. And really, that's all you need. Mold chocolate in a dish and a microwave. But again, as I said, we will be doing the double boiler method. And it's very simple. I'll try and get this mold to dry because I tried an experiment last night with marshmallows and kind of worked. Um, fortunately, I didn't film that, but you know. But very simply, a few other things you're going to want. A spatula. Safety gloves. And because you never know, always wear protective eyewear. So, let's glove up and get into it. Alright, all gloved up and ready to start. We have everything laid out here. Here I have an alcohol burner, mesh, and a beaker, uh, boiling water set on a nice flat surface, and this little metal pan that actually came from a um, mini oven, actually. Um, you know, you want to have a well-ventilated area, especially if you're doing this kind of setup. Um, but, yeah, let's just get to it with... Now you can add as much or as little, and let me tell you, it can be confusing as hell to know how many of these wafers it takes to fill one heart. Um, but we're going to try and do the whole mold, and I will eat the one that fell on the floor later. So, get them all in there. Now if you're doing this in a microwave, just just Put your wafers in a microwave-safe dish. Um, you know, you can see I have it filled up to the, the base there. You don't want it overflowing. That way you can secure it. And there you have it. Now, you can use tongs, um, other things. You know, obviously you don't want to be reaching in there. What I've done is taken some wire from Bunny and made myself a little noose jigger thing here that now doesn't want to cooperate. Screw it. So well, I did make it. Now I have to remake it, apparently. Um, slip this in here. Maybe cut this whole section out of the video. And now I do have tongs. I just... They're over with my tea stuff, and I'm, I'm lazy. And didn't think of it at the time, actually. And just went, hey, bunny, do you have any wire? So, nice long bit of wire here. And you just plop it in. And I've got about 300 milliliters of water in there. And uh, and this is the part where we wait. It doesn't actually take that long, especially in a microwave. You know, you're probably looking at it, you know, in, in a microwave, you're going to want to do it like every 15 seconds or so, stir it, etc. Um, this method. 
I've noticed you don't really have to stir it, honestly. I mean, I, I might pull it up and go bloop, bloop, you know, every now and then to kind of mix it a little better, but I push the wires out of the way here. And this is fun and easy way. I mean, you can add different dyes to the chocolate. Um, you can get different colored chocolate. Um, one thing I will warn you of, these, this isn't technically chocolate. This is salted caramel flavored candy wafers, um, which basically means they're white chocolate that tastes like salted caramel. They're not bad. They're just not chocolate. Um, I actually want to hit up all these sometime soon and get some... Um, Chocure chocolate, which is very good. Oots cocoa German chocolate. It's very cheap there. Um, and maybe make an additional video. Uh, why not? But this is just, you, you know, for the ones you love, the ones you like, show them that you care by making them chocolates. You know, anybody can go out and buy that Whitman sampler, but let's face facts. It's a Whitman sampler. And uh, I guess we will come back when this is ready. Um, it does take like five minutes or so. Um, and I actually need to get to the gym today, but I'm trying to film the portion where the alcohol burner is running because uh, though this is well ventilated, uh, Bunny can't stand the smell. And not to mention, I actually just sanitized just about everything around here with alcohol. So, so uh because I, I made quite the mess last night goofing around. Not really goofing around. Man, well, goofing around. She'll say goofing around. I say science. And uh, just for her. And so, yeah, when we come back, we will have a pot of melted chocolate. Which, let's get that in frame. We'll have a pot of melted chocolate. And all, all we really need to do is pour it into our mold here. And, you know, you could do all kinds of cool ideas around this, um, you know, Mario, Mario, uh, uh, cards where, you know, you have so many hearts, Zelda cards, so many hearts, um, and again, don't, don't limit yourself to hearts even, um, year round in the seasonal section of Dollar Tree, they always have ice cube molds. Now, ice cube molds are they're made out of silicon they're not the best silicon you know they're, they're not this nice super rubbery it's they're, they're a bit stiff but but uh they, they cost a dollar they have like right now they have hearts and roses at mine um you know during halloween they'll have cats and pumpkins and what have you and um you know even, even some of the plastic tray ones can be safe um but yeah, there's all kinds of things. And, and, you know, once you have this stuff, you, you can use it for everything. And, and that's the brilliant part. Like, you know, you don't have to limit yourself to confectionery with these molds or ice cubes. Uh, you can make soap. You can make candles. Um, we might explore that in the future. I don't know, because I don't really know anything about making candles. Then again, I didn't know anything about doing this. And uh, I don't really look things up. I just do them, because I think it's fun. And, uh, yeah, so when we come back, we'll have some goopy melted chocolate. And I will hopefully have time to make it to the gym. Here's to hoping it's boiling for a bit now. Well, heating up, it hasn't come to a boil yet, but it will have melted the chocolate quite a bit by now as you can see and you know if you still see a little bit of shape in your chocolate you know just just mix it stir it up you definitely want to stir it up as, as you go if you're using a microwave and now we get to the fun part moving the mold and you simply pour your chocolate in don't try and fill it all the way at first, because you'll see, unfortunately uh, I haven't gotten around to building a top-down rig for the camera yet, but hopefully soon I will get around to that. And you just keep pouring in. 
And cleanup is generally a breeze because you can eat all the remaining chocolate. It'll harden back up in the pot and you can just squeeze the pot and scrape it, you know. But otherwise hot water will just do the trick and whoop. What I like about these silicon pots is you can squeeze them and really get what's left in there out and you can usually get one or two extra hearts than you thought you could. Now unfortunately my nanny can't have dairy so I cannot present these to her for Valentine's Day but I will be looking into dairy free options and to get the last little bit out here take the spatula scrape it up just drizzle it in and you know, what you want to do is do this smack your mold and I don't know how well you can see in the camera here but we actually have a lot of these filling out now where they were clumped in the center a bit and try and get a little bit more out of here so this one is kind of black and And again, making a mess is part of life. Messes can be cleaned up. No matter how bad you think anything is, you can always start over, clean up, what have you. And sometimes things just need a little beating. Now, usually if I overfill these, what I like to do is take the, the blade edge of this, and my hair is getting caught in chocolate and go over to make that nice smooth look which I will present more to the camera in a second here and so there you go ah! okay tilting them may have not been the best idea how about we just we take this thing off and uh, present it like this huh? so now we can scrape that chocolate back in And just tap it down. You do want a level surface, generally speaking. But again, these are your hearts. You make them any way you want. So we tap that out. And now, to the victor, go the spoils. Ow. And we'll come back when these are these are hard. It doesn't take very long. Jesus, that is delicious. I don't, mm. And, uh, you know, first few sets of hearts, that's okay to eat too. Go buy more chocolate. And here we have our finished product. Lovely little pixelated hearts with styrations. Or whatever. I'm not refilming this. I can't think of the damn word. Um, you can see on the edges here, we do have a little bit of excess that you, know, you can poke off. That's, that's actually my fault. I just over flooded the mold and smeared it all around. But uh, yeah, join us next time where hopefully we will be building a top down rig for the YouTube channel using wooden dowels, square dowels, etc. And uh, have a wonderful night, people. Love you all.